This video is the second in a series about this Powermatic Model 90 wood lathe. The first video was about the mechanical operations of the machine, and you can find it right there if you want to look at it. This video will be about how the variable frequency drive controls the one horsepower three phase motor and how the low voltage control circuit controls that VFD. But before we do any of that, let's just run it and see how it operates. Turn it on with this 120 volt AC power switch. All other switches are low voltage control switches that control the VFD. The green start switch tells the VFD to send power to the motor. Spindle RPM then is registered on the tachometer. This is a potentiometer that controls the frequency output to the motor from the VFD. This is a forward and reverse toggle switch. So the reverse direction is protected. The default is forward. You can see how smoothly that VFD changes the direction of the motor. Then the big paddle to stop switch just tells the VFD to stop sending to the motor. The mechanical Reeves drive still works in the machine. So you've got a mechanical speed control on the spindle as well as a speed control for the motor. So really what this amounts to is you have a torque control through the Reeves drive and a motor speed control through the VFD. For this is the fastest speed for the machine, 2100 RPMs. Here I am turning the Reeves drive down to the slowest mechanical speed and then we'll turn the frequency control down to one hertz. It takes a while to register on the tachometer just because the spindle is moving so slow. 4 RPM is the minimum. I call this the ludicrous slow mode. I normally operate the machine with the Reeves drive about in the middle and then all the speed adjustments are done through the potentiometer and the VFD. Nice. This is the box that had all the electronics in it. Main power switch. There's a low voltage control switch. Other levers and mechanics. None of this was used. I will save it all though and give it to the next guy. This is the main three phase switch box. It also contains a relay. It's set on the back of the machine. This is a cover for the relays. The three phases of three phase power came in right here. And this is the relays that operated that three phase switch. One of the three phase legs was used as a control circuit and it operated that relay. Here you can see a closer view here. The relay was operated and it switched all three phases at the same time. All of this was replaced by the VFD. Well, I have the VFD and the motor out of the machine and sitting on the bench. And that'll give us a better view of how the thing works. I moved the RPM sensor off of the spindle and I put it on the motor so we could see how fast the motor is running. So the RPM display is still sitting on the machine. And this is the VFD. Pretty simple setup really. Single phase 120 volt power comes into these first two slots. Then magically three phase power, red, white, black come out of this last three slots. I put a magnet on the shaft for the motor and then taped it down, make sure it doesn't fly out of there. And then I also put a little piece of tape on the shaft so we could see it move. Okay, turn on the VFD and let's see what we can do here. 
The VFD is still has all the factory settings, except I have already set the maximum at 80 hertz. So at 60 hertz, it's putting out almost 1800 RPMs. You can also see that the acceleration time and the deacceleration time is a factory default of five seconds, which is pretty slow. We'll change that. So here we are at 60 hertz again, 1800 RPMs on the motor. Now I'm just running it up to the maximum that I've got set, which is 80 hertz. And now you can see it's almost 2400 RPMs on the motor. So what makes this VFD so great on a three-phase motor is now you have motor control that you've never had before. So I am adjusting the frequency down as low as one hertz, which is one cycle per second. It says 1.1, but I tried to hit one. So now we're at a motor speed of 32 RPMs which is going to be the minimum. That's pretty cool. When you touch the motor shaft like that, you can actually feel the three-phase power pulsing six times per second at this very slow speed. Very nice. This variable frequency drive can vary the frequency between zero and 200 hertz. Well, this motor is designed to run at 60 hertz, 1800 RPMs. If we were to run this at 200 hertz, it would drive the motor at nearly 6000 RPMs, three and a half times faster than it's designed to go. And I don't know if I want to see what might happen. This is the manual for the VFD. And there are probably, uh, I don't know, 30 or 35 different settings you could make that are different than the factory settings. And I've changed six. The acceleration time and the deacceleration time is five seconds. Well, we're going to change that to a second and a half. The minimum frequency and the maximum frequency, I'm going to change those to 80 and 1. And then finally, I don't want to be running the keypad all the time, so we're going to change that from the keypad to the low voltage terminal instead for controlling the VFD. These settings are all changed right on the keypad. Function 01 is five seconds for acceleration. Well, we're going to change that to a second and a half. Then I'm going to change all the other settings, but I'm not going to bore you with watching me click all the buttons here. Well, maybe I'll bore you just a little bit. So we have moved the control of the VFD from the keypad to this low voltage terminal. And there are 11 different terminal slots, and we're only going to use six of them. Forward and reverse direction control is 3, 4, hooked to number 5. And then 8, 9, 10 is 10 volt, variable volt, and 0 volt that controls the frequency output of the VFD. These three will be attached to a potentiometer. Well, the last time I did a video like this, a lot of guys were asking for the wiring diagram, so I'll just take care of that now. The dark lines here are 120 volt AC. Everything else is the low voltage DC control circuits. 120 volt AC comes into a junction box, and then the hot wire goes to a switch, and then it finally winds its way up to the VFD. Then the VFD transforms to three-phase power, and it goes to the motor. There is a 12-volt transformer coming off the AC power, and it's used to power the tachometer and the tachometer's pickup. There is a 10 volt circuit that comes from the VFD and it goes to the potentiometer that controls the frequency output for the VFD. 
And finally, there is a 12 volt circuit that comes from the VFD, flows through the on off paddle switch, and then to the forward reverse switch. So we're done with the work on the bench. We're going to put all this stuff back into the lathe. Attaching the low voltage control wires to the terminal on the VFD and the 120 volt AC power and the three phase power that'll go to the motor. This is the junction box that contains some of the AC connections. And I just also wanted to show you that's where I have the 12 volt DC transformer that powers the tachometer. I'm going to open up the control panel just to get a view of what it looks like in here. I brazed together three metal switch boxes just trying to make this thing as compact as I could. Here is the paddle switch, the forward and reverse switch, there's the potentiometer, and the tachometer display. The 120 AC power switch is right here. This is the magnetic pickup for the tachometer, and you can see where I put the magnet on the spindle. Is the pickup attached to the cast iron belt guard and it can be adjusted for a close fit to the magnet on the spindle. Now that I have the machine all back together I keep thinking we should have stressed that motor out a little bit and ran it up to 200 Hertz while it was on the bench just to see how it would perform. But too late now, you can't go back in time. Now this motor is designed to run at 60 Hz, 1800 RPMs. If we were to run this at 200 Hz, it would drive the motor at nearly 6000 RPMs. And I don't know if I want to see what might happen. nearly 6,000 RPMs. You know, let's see what happens. fun. If you've made it this far, leave me a comment. I appreciate those. I got to put all this stuff back in again. <laughs>